Hola, gracias Clara. Buenas tardes. Para, buenas tardes o buenos días para todos, dependiendo de qué zona habrá. Good también. afternoon, everyone. Depending on what your time zone is, let's get started. So we'll make the most of the time uh, we have for the uh, for this webinar. Let me welcome you. I'm Laura Kaplan. I'm uh, the manager of uh, uh, cooperation, development and cooperation. We are in charge of coordinating the projects for support of the community, such as the FRIDA uh, program. Let me tell you that this webinar was designed to uh, take to bring to you all of the information that you need to apply um, and all the opportunities that you have if you want to apply for the FRIDA program. Let me also tell you that this webinar is meant for you the participants. Uh, those of you who wanted to clarify doubts and to ask about any stages in the process that you don't clearly understand and understand what the stages are, understanding what the categories are of the themes. So before giving the floor to uh, Clara, who will start and to give you uh, general information on the FRIDA program, I invite you to ask everything you want to ask. Please do not hesitate, make the most of this uh, moment because this was designed to clarify any questions you can have and you can do it anytime during the presentation. There's no need for you to wait until the last time for questions or, of, well, we are going to have some time at the end, but anyway, you can interrupt if you want to ask any questions. So, we wish you the warmest uh, welcome. And uh, now Clara Cremona will start describing our work. Thank you, Lau. Well, we, let's start then with the presentation of the program and uh, Frida 2022. As Laura said just now, I'm Clara Cremona. I'm uh, Corporation Project uh, Assistant at LACNIC, and I'm going to talk about our FRIDA program. This program has been supporting projects, initiatives, and solutions in Latin America and the Caribbean for the strengthening of the internet in the region. On an annual basis, we call for projects openly and uh, public coordinated by LACNIC and, uh, the, uh, uh, and uh, it has a jury, of uh, an external jury of uh, regional experts on uh, the categories that are covered by our program. So far, FRIDA has been giving support to 121 projects and has awarded 47 prizes. We also have 14 projects that are underway that were, and they received grants in 2021. We have two modalities for support. We have uh, the grants and the awards. The grants are non-reimbursable financial support and a technical support to projects extending for uh, a maximum of 12 months. And the uh, funding that is given goes from uh, $2,000 to $40,000. And the, the awards also are uh, given to any projects, initiatives, or solutions that may present a concrete evidence of impact. And uh, the awards uh, are of $10,000. Let me also tell you who can be, who can benefit, who can uh, apply and uh, become benefits beneficiaries. We have operators, IXPs, uh, NOGs, uh, other technical community players, universities, research centers, working groups, uh, experts, associations, cooperatives, and other actors of civil society, as well as uh, public and or governmental entities pri and private entities. As to the technical categories, the thematic categories that we mentioned are internet stability and security that has four axes and a new subcategory 
that was uh, uh, created this year related to the use and application of blockchain te technology. Another category that uh, Frida works with is with connectivity and internet access. And that is designed to favor the quality of access and to enhance uh, the regional ISPs. And finally, the other category is um, an open and free internet to uh, address the current challenges in Latin America and the Caribbean related to the internet, human rights, and digital inclusion. Here I can show you the current, the makeup of the three categories with the different uh, thematic uh, access, stability and security, cybersecurity, internet resilience, interconnection, network operations, and the subcategory applies only for stability and security. This is what I mentioned, use and application of blockchain for the stability and security of the internet. As to connectivity and access, here you have the three access, internet connectivity, access uh, for a quality service strategies uh, to uh, empower the ISPs and uh, open and free internet, uh, internet and human rights and digital inclusion. Now let me give the floor to Alessia, who will tell us about the nominations and their characteristics or the how to apply. So now let's have Alessia share her screen. Thank you, Clara. Welcome everybody to this uh, space uh, for presenting uh, Frida 2022. I'm Alessia Zucchetti. I'm a, a research and cooperation project coordinator at LACNIC. Let me start by briefly telling you about uh, some of the key characteristics uh, that you need to apply that may be useful information uh, to those of you interested. Um, first of all, you have the possibility of uh, applying with more than one project, either in the same thematic category or in different ones. So the same organization that may have, for instance, different projects, uh, either being developed or ideas to be developed, may uh, apply with uh, different uh, proposals. And you also have the possibility of postulating as grants or in uh, awards. So the same institution might be capable of uh, uh, applying with an idea under a certain project, under grants, and a project that already has specific results and a specific impact under the awards uh, uh, category. As Clara said, different organizations may apply. So the categories of beneficiaries are very vast and they encompass both uh, organizations or groups of the technical community, organizations of civil society, research centers, academic institutions, organizations or companies uh, in the private sector, as well as uh, in the public sector or government uh, agencies, among others. Now, as you've been, uh, as you've seen, the categories and the thematic access are vast and they um, are meant to respond to the challenges, to the various challenges on issues related to the purpose of the program, that is to contribute to the strengthening of the internet in the region and the consolidation of an open, global, stable and secure internet. Applying in this uh, first initial stage or later on for the projects or the proposals that are pre-selected is brief in all the cases, both at this stage and uh, in the next stage. So we're going to tell you about this later on. When speaking about the specific characteristics that one that Clara mentioned when she started, I'd like to refer to the subcategories. There's just one subcategory that has been foreseen for this edition. This has to do with the use and application of blockchain for internet stability and security. 
this is a new topic both in terms of theoretical approximation and also of applied research therefore this field and the description of this subcategory is quite broad and seeks to motivate and the, the submission of proposals this subcategory is a priority for the FIDA program in this edition so if there is a project in progress which requires technical support and funding for the further development of scaling of that project i we invite you to apply we are aiming at projects that have to do with research case studies or prototypes or proof concept provided they focus on practical objectives and achieving specific results that are original and in this way contribute to a solution or to generate knowledge which can lead to developing this topic at regional level as regards the area of connectivity and access to the internet the thematic axes are focused on different aspects firstly as clara mentioned internet connectivity is focused on those proposals that promote connectivity to populations that don't have connectivity for example in rural areas or in urban areas which don't have correct coverage there is specific uh, focus on alternative access models as well as of affordable models that provide solutions in terms of connectivity in addition to that internet access with a quality this has to do with enhancing quality of the connection in already existing access this can be for example improving coverage or increasing access speed among other issues and finally the access related to strategies to improve internet providers in the region this has to do with all those needs or challenges that internet service providers face at regional level in this case in the description you will find an explanation on what are isps what isps are considered at regional level this also has the purpose of providing guidance to applicants and finally, we have open and free internet. This has to do with two multidimensional areas, human rights and digital inclusion. This is aimed at those projects that include challenges in areas such as the right to privacy and personal data protection, human rights in the digital area, the role of emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, big data, Internet of Things, and other topics in the field of human rights. And finally, but not less important, is digital inclusion. This is aimed at the needs and challenges related to the digital divide, the skills, the digital skills in a wider sense, both for the future of work and the incorporation into the labor market, as well as overcoming the digital divide in general. What are the requirements for the applications? The general requirements, this is something that is important to take into account. We have these five here. One is the relation to the FIDA program objectives, if this proposal is aligned with promoting the consolidation of the internet regionally and the strengthening of internet regionally. Secondly, the 
relevance to in the context of one of the categories of beneficiaries, these are quite wide in scope. Thirdly, the development of these activities in Latin America and the Caribbean, specifically in those territories and countries that make up the coverage area of LACNIC. This proposal should also be focused on populations and communities at local level, at municipal level, in many territories. At the same time, these number four is the applications should be related to one of the thematic categories or subcategories, as would be the case of internet stability and security. For example, the use of blockchain in that context. And finally, the relation to specific requirements in terms of the duration of this proposal. For example, in the case of a proposal that has, in the context of grants, this should not be longer than 12 months. In the case of required funding, this should not be for a um, uh, sum over $40,000. And this has to do with all the requirements done in the context of one of the Strida grants. These are some general considerations regarding the applications. We are now in stage number one. This is the application stage, which will be open until Tuesday, May the 31st. In this initial stage, this is a simplified application done through the FRIDA application platform. You access the FRIDA.net site and FRIDA funds. In that tab, you find the three categories. Then you have the option of applying directly or registering if you haven't done so previously, and then to access the application form. In this initial stage, general data are required of the organizations that are proposing the project, the project leader, in the case of the grants, the amount uh, that uh, you're applying for. As regards the project, both for the grants and for the awards, a brief summary, no longer than 500 words, should be submitted. And finally, some specific fields that have to do with the evaluation criteria. After this first stage, those projects, those projects that are accepted will go on to the second stage. Here, you will have the option of submitting the complete application. In this case, this includes very similar fields compared to those of stage one. But in this case, you have the opportunity of expanding the concept included in the initial stage. Some general considerations prior to filling in the initial application form, you have to consider the description of the thematic or categories or subcategories, for example, the use of blockchain for the stability and security of the internet. Secondly, to select the thematic axis that is more related to your project. There might be proposals that can be related to more than one thematic axis. One of the general recommendations is to consider which is the main objective of the proposal, what is the proposal aiming at specifically, and then what is the challenge or the problem that you expect to tackle through this project. This will help you to select the thematic axis that is related most to the problem or the overall objective or specific objective. Thirdly, to identify the type of support, if this is a grant, if this is an award. In the case of an award, please remember that 
you have to highlight initiatives or projects that already have specific results and have a specific impact and can be proven in the case of grants. These can be projects that will be developed. And if you have background information on projects that are already were already carried out, this will be valued positively. You access to the application platform. You fill in the initial form with the required fields. Regarding the main fields associated to the projects, both the application form in this initial stage and for the later stage in the complete application, this is associated to the characteristics of the project and the proposal. You, we have the, the summary, which is an open descriptive field of not more than 500 words. In this case, one of the recommendations is to describe the project or the initiative that you plan to develop or the one that has been developed. This would be the case of an award. Secondly, the objectives, the overall objective and the specific objectives. And thirdly, the problem, the need or the challenge that you expect to tackle through this proposal and through the application to the FIDA program. There are some other fields that are specifically related to the evaluation criteria. So the information in the form and the one contained in the description seek to be a guide for the applicants. The, you needn't have to reply to all the elements, but please take these into account in order to express this in the required areas of the form. First of all, one of the main evaluation criteria has to do with the relevance and applicability of the proposal. Secondly, the impact and the expected results in the case of a grant or those achieved, that would be for the awards. And finally, the continuity, the sustainability and the replicability of your proposal. In the case of these fields, these are open fields of a restrictive nature with a maximum of 200 words. The intention is that to include here a brief description of the relevance and applicability of the proposal in the context of some of the elements including as follows. For example, if this tackles regional challenges or needs, how is this done if this implies a progress in the status of knowledge or a progress in the developed thematic category or thematic axis? You could also describe the objectives, methodology, and the proposed activities, and also respond to the question on the relevance of the project, as well as the composition of the technical team and the organization that is proposing this. You can also include background information and description of the relevance and applicability of the project. In the case of impact and expected results, once again, here you have some specific criteria that have the objective of guiding the applicants. For example, the expected results, the obtained results, the impact, and the context of the geographical area or the expected coverage. For instance, this could be the case of a proposal on, for instance, uh, connectivity and access to the internet, uh, either under um, internet connectivity, for instance, or access to the internet for a quality service, 
if it assumes or not uh, technical uh, improvements uh, in uh, hardware or software or prototypes or also uh, material results uh, at a technology level, whether it implies um, the enhancement or improvement of the services provided or the development of knowledge at, at a practical level, for instance, through guidelines, methodologies, uh, uh, training, um, papers, publications, uh, um, lectures at or presentations at uh, conferences, etc. Once again, these elements are aimed at guiding the response in uh, this uh, uh, here in this field and by no means do we uh, intend all of the proposals to respond to all of them. And in the case of uh, continuity, the um, sustainability and replicability of the proposal, um, the idea is uh, to uh, go on with a specific proposal, maybe uh, considering whether the results expected in the development of the project uh, are potentially can potentially be applied in other contexts, geographical areas or populations that differ from the target popul population in the project. Whether the idea is to create uh, partnerships with our institutions, if those are existing partnerships, whether they have been identified or they have been uh, already developed among other issues. And finally, with regard these main fields associated to the project that you can find in this initial uh, application, you find optional fields that are open to, and they are brief, and they might not apply. Let me tell you that they are optional because you have the possibility. If they don't apply, you may say so in uh, putting it in each field. One is whether the proposal um, uh, is um, innovative or whether it has anything new, for instance, with regard to the methodology or the results expected or other cases. The inclusion of gender perspective, whether it um, provides for the gender perspective in the uh, internet ecosystem, and finally, whether it's associated to one of the SDGs. And in this case, there is a possibility of picking one of them. As I said earlier, these are optional fields. And if they don't apply, you can perfectly well say so. So as we said at the beginning, if you apply this first, uh, the, the application is open until uh, Tuesday, May 31st at 2359 local time uh, in Uruguay. You may access the platform through Frida.net. And here too, you have the social media of Frida. If you have any questions, you may also contact the team through Frida at uh, lacnic.net. So thank you. And if you have any questions, we may answer them, some of them now. And if not, at the end, we are going to open the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you, um, Alessia. Well, as we already have some questions, we can start answering them before we give the floor to the remaining panelists. The first question we were asked by Coordinación WISP Mexico says, could you please share the presentation when the session is over? Ale, would you like to answer it? Yes, of course. Yes, sure. Both, uh, we, we're going to share the presentation with uh, all of the attendees and as uh, this uh, at this initial stage the idea is to close for it to close next tuesday we're going to do it just as soon as this session is over good thank you then we have another question by yetna guzman who says good afternoon i have a doubt 
on uh, the grants and awards. Could you please give us more details of the all, all the process of transfer, implementation and uh, monitoring of economic support? This has to do with what uh, Ali explained, but maybe you would like to discuss it more in detail. Yes, in the case of uh, the application at this initial stage, the potential beneficiaries that can be multiple categories of uh, organizations that could uh, apply for a free, free a program under any of the thematic uh, um, access and that uh, have to do with uh, what they want to propose. They may apply both for a grant that is aimed at promoting the development of projects either at uh, an initial stage or projects that already have a history. Not uh, longer than 12 months and for non-reversible funding from $10,000 to $40,000. And finally, the prices for the awards that aim at highlighting and distinguishing initiatives that may have concrete results uh, and impact already attained. In this case, the acknowledgement is a financial price of $10,000. In the case of grants, it is also done. Not only do you access uh, to funds uh, for projects that is going to be implemented, but there's also technical support by uh, if the proposal is selected, is, is uh, pre-selected in the initial phase and then in the, in the second stage, they are assigned a technical assessor. And so together with the staff uh, of uh, research and cooperation, the proposals are monitored and uh, the way they are, uh, are rolled out uh, uh, is monitored throughout their implementation. And after uh, this final stage of selection, when uh, uh, a grant, uh, a project with a grant is started, you have the possibility, well, you sign a contract with LACNIC, a grant contract, and you have a technical monitoring, as I said earlier, and three payments uh, the installments to pay the total amount of, of the grant. I hope that I answered your question. Thank you, Ali. Yes, perfect. We have other questions in the Q&A, but I would suggest giving the floor to the panelists so that we'll have enough time for them and we'll leave these questions for the end, if you agree. Yes, yes, of course. Well. In this next uh, 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 time, we'll have some experiences of projects for, and uh, the uh, leaders or participants of projects that were received grants in 2020, as well as one of the projects that is currently underway. So we'll give the floor to Franco first of the Foundation for the Dissemination of Knowledge and Sustainable Development, Vida Libre, who will share his experience and some of the results of the project that they developed through the FRIDA program that is uh, the right, the right uh, to share a free internet strategies for legal protection of the public discourse uh, in uh, vis a vis unbalances of copyright in the region. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to be present in the name of Fundación Vía Libre. I again want to thank Frida for all their support that they gave us for our project. Let me briefly, briefly tell you what it was all about and some of the most outstanding results that we got. Our project, as Alessia said, is called the right to share a free internet Essentially, it is hosted in www.derechosdeautor.org.ar. Um, I'll spell it later so that you can visit it. 
And basically the project consisted of two working axes. On the one hand, uh, training people on copyright matters in different ecosystems that may uh, uh, receive the impact uh, to um, help people understand and manage their copyrights in question in their daily activities. Uh, I'm going to discuss this further later. And on the other hand, to detect the negative impact of abusive uh, uh, use uh, of content in social media in Latin America. And we uh, obtained a, a channel to report for the users that uh, were suffering the abusive use of contents could uh, submit their cases and there we would be able to get to learn more about the censorship uh, implemented in to the legitimate expression of users of social media in our region as to the first axis of work together with well training essentially consisted of building a number of resources for specific ecosystems as i already mentioned reach to provide the regulation uh, copyright regulation including educators and journalists the sector of content creation today booming in our region and of course also to uh, discuss uh, free culture and the abcs about copyrights we work with a multidisciplinary team and with experts of uh, the different sectors to uh, help us uh, develop uh, to present uh, these topics in a clear and accessible uh, vocabulary or, or a jargon so that people can understand it and we can demystify the copyright after building these resources you can visit the site that i already mentioned and we held a number of uh, meetings to present uh, these resources with a specific uh, uh, constituencies that i already mentioned including the uh, union of educators of teachers in buenos aires and the journalist uh, union of the province of buenos aires and also with important uh, uh, content creators or the so-called influencers and also with sectors that participate of free uh, culture but maybe are not so familiar with copyrights but we considered it to be relative such as or, uh, people who contribute in with wikipedia and that are present in argentina and other countries in latin america this process is still underway we are building new resources for instance for the editorial of the publishers uh, so as to support the small uh, publishers that work independently and also building some more resources that i don't want to discuss yet because in the end i want them to be a surprise and then with regard to the reporting channel, as I mentioned it earlier, this is a very simple form where the users affected by a moderation that is abusive, that is, that it is not adjusted to the constitutional parameters allowing for censorship in the countries, may send us their cases, their experience, as well as the resolution if they had appealed to the decision of the platform. And in that regard, we can learn about the real impact in our region uh, and the impact of abusive use of censorship against the freedom of expression that has a direct impact on a democracy and our democratic life. I don't want to discuss it any longer because I I have only five minutes. In the Anglo-Saxon world, and particularly in the United States, these reporting channels already existed. So content moderation is done to the platforms based on the North American legislation, particularly during the Digital Millennium corporate act but in latin america there were no tools of this kind although there are other types of tools 
developed by partner organizations, it was necessary to include a reporting channel in order to enable interaction and to inform about those who are really affected by this on a daily basis or frequently. I'm referring to journalists, to influencers and different users that respond to communication in our region. So that is in general terms, and I'm most grateful to the Frida program. They really provided a lot of support. They gave us suggestions, and we could be in contact with them at all times. This is the most recommendable program for all those organizations who are trying to drive forward their agenda in the context of what Frida offers. I am open to any questions, and I'd like to give the floor to the other speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Franco. I now give the floor to Arturo from the Technological Institute of Higher Studies of Monterrey, who will be speaking about his project, which was funded in the context of FRIDA 2021 of the previous edition. And this is currently in progress. You have the floor. Arturo, we cannot hear you. Perdón. I'm Gracias. sorry. Thank you. First of all, as Franco also said, I'd like to thank FRIDA program for the support provided throughout this grant and for the development of this project. Let me tell you about my project. Basically, I participated in the modality of a research project. What we sought as a result of the pandemic in 2020 was Due to the increase of denial of service attacks, maybe due to confinement and maybe due to the fact that many companies went over to working online. At the same time, there was an exponential growth of the number of the devices connected to the network and in the context of Internet of Things. So then we set out to identify these attacks in the new generation networks which are the software-defined networks, and this for the IoT devices. So we started the study with different models of intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence, with machine learning and others. This project is co-authored with the University of Antioquia in Colombia. So we decided to travel to Colombia where we had support from a cybersecurity company, one of the major companies in Colombia. So we created a new data center, which we called LATAM. This data center and the data generated from the project will be available to all the FRIDA community and the international community. So far, we have obtained very good results. The best models that we had obtained, training with the BOGA UT, this was applied to a data set with physical devices and with a company that supported us for the purpose of this study with a small data center that we had. They made Entonces, all the devices available to us. Once we selected the two models, we then applied this to the LATAM data center. We continue obtaining very good results, results above 98 to 99% of accuracy in terms of attack identification. And that is the status of this project. This project is being implemented in 2022 and now beginning with the mitigation stage. One of the uh, PhD students is working on this in order to develop good mitigation strategies for these kinds of attacks. Finally, I would like to add 
or si say quiere, that eh, utilizar para if anyone wishes to use this data test, set, eh, va a estar disponible el que se this creó will be con available, físico. the one created with último, the physical cerrar, participación, eh, equipment. Eh, to close my presentation, I'd like to comment on some suggestions a la hora de, de que sometan sus propuestas. Who are personal, considering eh, applying to the project? I obtained the grant in my third proyecto. attempt. Eh, la verdad, eh, Some years ago, no, I had no participated no with other projects, but I wasn't no even shortlisted. I was discouraged eh, and decided not to participate. 2019, eh, in 2019, I participated eh, for the first time. No I was shortlisted, embargo, but I didn't win. But this was most motivating in order to improve my project and to start working on the subject, as I said, this has to do with how these attacks increased during the pandemic. Now, one of the suggestions that I'd like to share with you is to ask yourselves what are you good at, what is the experience you have, and then try to figure out a solution to a problem in line with the objectives of this FRIDA program. That is of key importance, and also to clearly spell out your objective, what, is your, what you expect to achieve, what are the deliverables, Pues después es intentarlo. Cada año que yo leía el proyecto nuevamente, eh, encontraba áreas de oportunidad, cosas que podían mejorar, y seguramente que eh, pues tarde so, o temprano van a lograr la solución, como finalmente yo lo conseguí el año pasado. Attain the grant, as was my case last year, and now I'm in the stage of implementing my project. Right now, we're starting with the mitigation stage. Hopefully, we will obtain good results. We have made two publications based on this project. Hopefully, we will have further publications. All of these will be available to the community. And I'm happy to take any questions if any wishes, anyone wishes to ask anything. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arturo. Thank you, Franco. Thank you, Arturo, for sharing your experiences with the participants and the main outcomes of your projects. Clara, you now have the floor to continue with the questions and answers, if any. Yes, we have quite a number of questions. Hopefully, we can answer all these questions because we cannot go beyond the time allocated for this webinar, but we'll try to be brief. Here we had another question. Is it possible to apply for a grant if the project is already in progress, but we don't have any results or indicators yet? Yes, it is possible. The grants, the main objective of the grants is to fund proposals or projects in the initial stages. In the case of the awards, yes, you should have some re previous results. Thank you, Ale. Another question from Pedro de Perdigon, Lana. Hello, I have a question, a doubt regarding the project that we plan to submit. This is focused on Latin America, but will be developed globally as well at the same time. Is this possible? Or should this only be focused on Latin America? So if you think I can answer, if you agree, I'll answer this question. Yes, the applications for FRIDA awards or grants should be focused on Latin America and the Caribbean region. So that is the focus we have. Someone is asking whether this could be developed globally. Regarding that, the project can be developed globally at a later stage, but that is not the focus of Frida. 
This is because this is a regional fund. But maybe at a later stage, the project can be scaled up to encompass other regions. Let me go on with the question asked by Daniel Salazar. Good afternoon. How long does it take um, between stages one and two? The application stages? Well, we have an initial selection of those applications in order to determine whether they comply with the basic requirements stated by Frida to have access to grants. Then there is another stage where the jury analyzes the different projects. This takes about one month. And after that, the projects that have been pre-selected should then submit the full proposal. Between the initial selection one month and then the applicants are informed whether they have been shortlisted or not. Yes, the dates have been published. The 30th of June will be the date for announcing the shortlisted projects, and they have time until the 15th of July to submit the full proposal. Andrei Arturo Coisierra asks, should you provide a detailed description of the use of this grant from the financial standpoint. At, no, at this stage, you have to state the amount you're applying for. If your proposal is then selected, then you do have to provide a detailed budget by for the different items, not in this initial stage. Thank you. Luis Aaron Jimenez. The intellectual property belongs to the applicant, or is this shared by LACNIC or some other organization? Intellectual property belongs to the applying organization, of course. They should mention that they receive funding from the FRIDA program. Ricardo, in our proposal, there is a Latin American university as a proposing organization and other are associated universities. Could these, could an, one of these supporting uh, universities belong, to, not belong to a Latin American or Caribbean university? Well, it could be the case. Here we have a question that was already answered. Ricardo was asking how much time will elapse between the initial and the stage and the second one that was answered already. And this other question regarding the indicators. Luis Alvarez, hello. We have to develop programs or applications to participate in FRIDA, even in the open and free internet era. Can you also submit proposals that use existing programs as a means to strengthen the practice of rights, for example, of boys and girls and adolescents in the framework of the pandemic? It is not necessary to develop this. You, for example, you could have materials, specific material results or proofs of concept or prototypes, particularly for projects that are in the context of a more technical categories like stability of the internet. This would be the case of Arturo's program, but this is not a requirement. And there are thematic axes that have a more social approach. Then we have another question. 
the product resulting of a product, will it remain available for the public, open source? Is it shared with uh, the uh, participant that proposes it? Do you, that can it give rise to a startup? Can you profit from that product? Well, yes. What we do, well, what you do about it, as I said earlier, as long as the product remains open for the community, it's not something that is specifically, you, we don't monitor what happens with the results, but we, we do uh, take care of the results later on, but not that specifically. Perfect. Then we have two questions about the budget. The amount requested, is it given, uh, uh, it is given complete, it may be, uh, are there is any uh, itemizations, uh, no restrictions? Well, Ali, I can answer these questions. The amount requested may be assessed during the period of uh, selection and you can e we can we even consider to what extent it uh, adjusts to the proposal maybe the, the 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 amount may be higher than what we consider should be uh, given and we may uh, find out about the possibility of adjusting it and as uh, as to the it itemization as Ale said we don't request you to describe to give details of how you're going to use the money but just uh, the overall amount and we don't have any requirements about the different items that is if you are pre-selected when the a complete budget is proposed each budget will distribute the, the budget as they deem necessary for their project. All right, so that is about uh, the project. The project, can the project selected be continued in a future call? That's Ricardo's question. Yes. Yes, you can apply. For instance, in the case of a project that has already been funded by Frida, if that's what you mean, a project funded by Frida in a previous uh, uh, proposal might apply now and might be selected. So you have that possibility. This is something that we ask in, uh, that is one of the general queries, whether we ask you, for instance, whether you already received uh, FRIDA funds in the past, also for information purposes, when we are evaluating it. All right, good. Now I'm going to leave, uh, go to other questions because Ricardo asked many questions and we'd like to answer these two here and then we'll go back. Marcelo Alberto Gomez is asking, at what stage of do you of the project do you have the technical support? It would be good to have it at early stages so that we you can uh, give your view feedback on uh, the development of the project. Yes, in the case of grants, once the projects are selected, we have we hold an initial meeting. We ask you for a detailed uh, timetable in the case of the grants and. After that, we start with uh, the uh, uh, technical monitoring and we do initial recommendations that may be considered by the project or not, not necessarily, but where you have a technical expert on the specific topic. And this is something that is started from the very beginning. Good. Alejandro Madariaga is asking, can the um, applicants uh, be, belong to the private sector or do, do they have to be uh, uh, institutions or companies? Do you assess them differently? No, no. Uh, as I said initially, 
the evaluation, the assessment focuses on the quality of the proposals and the projects, not on who the applicants are. And as a matter of fact, private companies may apply. It's not necessary for them to include any members. Uh, and uh, of course, if uh, the uh, association or the your uh, institution or agencies wishes to include their names, then you can do it, but it's not a requirement. Good. Ricardo is also asking whether we can present a project over $40,000, but supported with other funds. Yes, whether this is, yes, this is something that happens very often with large projects and that request Frida um, funding, but they have their own too. So the answer is yes. Let me see if uh, there are other. Well, our proposal will benefit, especially an ISP, I imagine, for clarification of internet access. Is that in the target uh, of Frida? Yes, indeed. You could also apply either under connectivity of access or uh, and the thematic access of any of the three that are included in that category, depending, as I said initially, how you formulate the proposal. What is the key objective that you target? What are the problems that you try to solve? And how that associates to, to what thematic access it associates better. All right, and finally, the last question in the panel, how do you transfer the funds? to a personal uh, um, account or an institutional account. Well, it, it should go to an institutional account because we need an institution or an agency or whatever nature. It may be of different natures, but it has to be a legal person. Some entities that apply to Frida, they, are, they don't have a legal, they're not a legal person. As you have in the q and in our website. You need to create a partnership with other um, institution that is has a legal person so that they can sign the contracts, etc. Well, here it says, thank you. What are the requirements of a, of a member entity? Well, the same requirements as, for instance, you need to be among the beneficiaries. But other than that, there are no specific requirements. Exactly. Ricardo is thanking us for the questions. Well, and I think that's about all. So, any other questions that arise later or that we couldn't formulate now, we invite you to get in touch. As Alice said, you can contact us through our email, frida at lacnic.net. I think that, well, there's a question left. It says, oh, you didn't answer mine. I don't know whether you it was in the panel. Maybe we can answer it now. We have just one minute. Well, just uh, so that that would be all. We invite you to apply. It's a very easy form that we have at this stage. So just that. And to thank you all for this space that you shared with us. Thank you, everyone. Well, with this, we put an end to this uh, meeting. And as Clara said, we'll be at your disposal if you have any question uh, these days before um, the end of this. Uh, well, we said that uh, applying is uh, very simple. It's very quick. So 
other than the questions, the specific questions that you may have, we invite you to please apply because it's an opportunity that you have to develop projects and initiatives in the region aiming at strengthening the internet. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank Arturo and uh, Franco. Thank you.